previous video, everyone decided to talk about my hair. I don't really understand it. I've grew it. It's what it is. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I don't, yeah, I'm just growing my hair. It is what it is. I don't know what else to say about it, except from, yes, it can turn into an afro. Anyway, so today, I'm going to do a little extract of what I talk about quite often to people. I'm just doing a little extract of what I found a couple weeks ago. So, this is a real infection. I saw it and analyzed it and gave it a little bit of a look. This is a, this is an ex, uh, a look at an exploit kit in real uh, in a real situation. Basically, I've already talked about exploit kits, but just on a, a general starting basis, exploit kits try to find vulnerabilities from software to exploit via browser. And uh, you know, in the general terms, usual suspects: Flash, Java, Silverlight, and Internet Explorer are usually the usual suspects. And usually it's silent and put inside an iframe so the person is unaware of what's going on. Sometimes the actual application looks like it's um, hanging or crashing. Sometimes, it de especially with a browser, if it's a browser exploit, it may hang or look like it's about to crash. That can actually be quite a, uh, an obvious thing for someone to look at and think, Maybe I should close down this application. Something's not right. But on the the most of the time, uh, plugins as well. You know, they just see it hanging. Some people leave it, um, and not always does it hang. So usually it's quite silent. People are unaware. They visit a website and they you know they haven't patched some sort of software and they're in trouble. So there's zero days, which I'm not going to talk about in here. This is an example of malvertising what I have. This was from an ad exchange, which I haven't censored the URLs. Um, this was malvertising, basically using advertising networks as a vector for infection. Okie doke. Let's get on to the next slide. So um, this is what it looks like. Your ad exchange is where it started. And then binarybank.xyz is where it, you know, the, the bad stuff began. It basically redirected to... Um, CV Pinoy Australian Forum.com. I think Binary Bank was something where the your ad exchange vetted. I can't believe that this is happening in the video. Helicopter as well. So Binary Bank was also probably used as something that looks legitimate. And what they've done is then, after they've been verified, they redirect it to something that has. Uh, some exploit kit code or, or redirected to somewhere which can execute such exploits. So after the flash exploit we can actually see here that it's got roast files 2017 and it's downloading a binary and then it actually pings uh, binary bank again oh, binary bank again in the network traffic so that's something to take into account. This is where the exploit kit starts and analyzes, sees that it can actually run an exploit of Flash, because um, I have a vulnerable version of Flash on the virtual machine, and so it runs that, identifies that, and then it basically downloads a file via Flash by the looks of it. So this would the time I found this was on that sort of date, so there you go. Um, so yeah, just just a basic redirect really. Um, document found. This is what it looks like. As we can see, we can also see VB script and then a load of function. Well, a function. This is usually given an indication that there's a VB script. Uh, using VB script to do an exploit. That that is also a possibility here for for a browser exploit. There's you can search that up. To be honest, there's a lot on that sort of thing. And we can also see a lot of comments that are a bit weird. If I just beautify that, we'll see that. Um, We've got things like window.liney equals bcyt and then it also then equals to this. And basically this is a really long winded set of, of saying this variable here or this this statement here equals true basically. But because it can equal like that, it, it sort of makes it a little bit harder to read and also maybe a little bit more different from other exploits. Um, it's trying to evade itself from antivirus and actually the flash exploit that was hit here um, I think we'll find is fully undetectable I think I might have included it in the slides so as well as that we have some comments which are randomized um, to space out the characters just to evade antivirus and make it difficult for researchers really so if true essentially that means um, so we essentially we just want to look at that sort of code but we have to beautify it and look at this code first, which makes it even more annoying. Do take note of the L there. 
So, function L, we can see this is for this, but they, they fired multiple exploits at once. Um, this was the VB script, so this was function L, which had S in it. As we can see, this is looks like looks like the main body of the exploit that we want to look at deobfuscating. Um, and it actually gives you the deobfuscation directly below it, so it makes it a little bit easier for it to... You know, the, the exploits were segmented and the deobfuscation, uh, deobfuscation was also segmented easily for me to advent identify what's going on, basically. So I was quite happy about that. But essentially, it's doing the same things. Actually, all we need to do to actually deobfuscate is replicate the, um, the algorithm that they're using. So we just need to identify what functions they're using and how they're using them so we can see here return r this is something we want to be looking at um, as well as what is in in use in the l function that's that's in correlation with s if that makes sense so we really want to know where this data is being put like where where is the deobfuscation happening so you have to link s with something um, and as we can see s is there s dot char at and then we've got a variable x. So this seems to be the correct um, algorithm to deobfuscate. So that's something to take into account. But then, you know, uh, I wanted to look at the flash exploits. So this is what it looked like. So we're creating a JavaScript uh, script. So it's creating another JavaScript within JavaScript. We can see that create element script. We can see it's sort of um, fragmented but you can see it it's it's quite easy to read even though they've commented it out this is usually done by generators not a human manual way so sometimes it's quite easy to read and they don't really understand that and we've also got function L so take note of that as well we've got another function L um, quite easy to note that it's just inserting it into the body of the JavaScript. Okay, so what I did here is I basically copied all of this segmented code that was obviously the flash exploit and what I did is I went through every single one until I hit the flash exploit. So I'm just hitting out a few steps that I did, but basically this is the code for the flash exploit. Um, and that looks relatively like um, base64. We can see the padding here, the equals. So, you know, it's, it's interesting, but to be honest, we don't really need to worry about the technicalities of it. All we have to do from the looks of it is just, we can see the return R there, is see what re function L creates because it's it's putting itself into javascript a, a script tag um, and so all we need to do really is put it in a text area so that's what i did and we receive something that looks like this now this again we need to beautify but we can already see you know this is basically object code where it directs so not really that intricate the actual exploit kit i don't know i think it might have been i'm not you know too clued up on exploit kits but to me this didn't seem anything out of you know really good at all it was very easy to look at and find um and i think it's someone's custom homebrewed version of exploit kits if not very poorly coded because that was it was relative there was only one step and only one de redirection to get to the flash um, file which is actually quite uncommon so what we have here is quite a simple just appending into the body basically with the flash object um, and I'm just highlighting the actual link that we got from the start which is there <laughs> nope nope there um, yeah so then I looked at identifying the actual exploit and this is actually quite hard because it used an, an obfuscator of some kind and I'm not actually that clued up with um, Flash, obviously. I don't use it often enough um, and we all know that Flash will hopefully die soon. So, you know, at least on, in browsers. So the thing I had problem with is that there aren't really any Flash deobfuscators out there. And so I had quite a, I could, you know, create a whole new deobfuscator to have a look at the Flash and try and substitute the characters because they all have to be, uh, you know, all of these characters have to be of something. Um, but instead of that, I got quite lucky um, and it was only simply, simply character substitution. Um, they left out one of these functions was called fill obj 4000 yeah 4000 and i was 
quite intrigued by that because every other real function, there was a, maybe a few others that led me to this, but almost all of these that I've reviewed the source code for were obfuscated. They used an obfuscator, but with this, they left it out. And I'm not really sure if it was because it was not working for them or they would... I really don't understand how it happened, but it helped me understand this obf 4000 while here. This allows me to understand in fairly good confidence, although, you know, there are quite a lot of exploits around, that this is the hacking team exploit that was released a year ago. Um, it allowed me to understand and see what it was doing, and I think it was downloading, basically, a downloader to, to bas basically uh, execute the final infection point, shall we say. So, this was simply the exploit that I understood um, as Phil Object 4000, which came to that CV. The reason for, and I didn't say it here, is that it could be really useful to understand how sophisticated the attacker is, because they might be having a new exploit possibility, or they possibly, or they may have a fairly new one, or they're using quite old, in, in exploit terms, 2015, um, exploits. Uh, you know, people from hack forums or exploit.in could possibly use this because um, this is fairly public, this exploit, and it's easy to create your own. So to me, that's why I think it was a homebrew, fairly unsophisticated attacker. And it led me to a program called Tunflix. And basically, seemed to be Russian origin. Don't like to attribute too much blame, obviously, because, um, you know, it's just the file description was Gorbachev. So I can't really say too much confidence that it is but uh, that isn't really what this is about ob attributing any blame or threat to anyone um, modified obfuscator for .NET so it made it a little bit harder for me to read it actually dropped to .NET it didn't drop any C or C++ which was um, actually quite a surprise to me usually with exploit kits they drop um, they drop C or C++ so as quite interested to see that. Uh, modifies DNS servers, uh, binaries modified within a three hour frame because I saw that the hashes had changed. Primarily all of the programs, there was multiple programs, I've just um, summarized them, um, were using .NET which as I say is quite interesting and to the right of me here we can see that there is, still got my face in the way, uh, we've got some IPs that they used um, to modify my virtual machine's DNS. So what's the problem with that? Send all traffic through a proxy essentially instead of read through traffic. Why would you trust someone that has infected you to have a little look at your traffic or be able to route your traffic in such ways? Owns how you navigate around the internet. Um, I couldn't be able to actually see what they were doing because I actually couldn't connect from their DNS servers so I couldn't go as far as that. But most likely antiviruses or researchers had been breaking it or doing some sort of thing to, you know, remove DNS servers in that way. The flash file I don't think I have here is was um, fully undetectable and was for quite some days. I actually haven't checked on it, so it could be still. Um, but yeah, that, that is quite worrying that it was fully undetectable for that long. Um, so an interesting look at a real infection. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.